Good morning everyone and welcome to worship on this Thursday morning, the 21st of October. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The night is far spent and the day is at hand. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O Lord, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and for ever. Amen. Psalm 143 Hear my prayer, O Lord, give ear to my supplications. In your faithfulness answer me, in your righteousness. Do not enter into judgment with your servant, for no one living is righteous before you. For the enemy has pursued me, crushing my life to the ground, making me sit in darkness like those long dead. Therefore my spirit fails within me, my heart within me is appalled. I remember the days of old, I think about all your deeds. I meditate on the works of your hands, I stretch out my hands to you, my soul thirsts for you like a parched land. Answer me quickly, O Lord, my spirit fails. Do not hide your face from me, or I shall be like those who go down to the pit. Let me hear of your steadfast love in the morning, for in you I put my trust. Teach me the way I should go, for to you I lift up my soul. Save me, O Lord, from my enemies. I have fled to you for refuge. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Let your good spirit lead me on a devil path. For your name's sake, O Lord, preserve my life. In your righteousness, bring me out of trouble. In your steadfast love, cut off my enemies and destroy all my adversaries, for I am your servant. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. O God of justice, we fail to act justly and depend on the power of righteousness. Look with compassion on those surrounded by danger and guide us all along the path of life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 16. I have said these things to you to keep you from stumbling. They will put you out of the synagogues. Indeed, an hour is coming when those who kill you will think that by doing so they are offering worship to God. And they will do this because they have not known the Father or me. But I have said these things to you so that when the hour comes you may remember that I told you about them. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you. But now I am going to him who sent me. Yet none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of Truth comes... He will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak of his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In this passage, we're disciples at the supper table with Jesus on the same night that he was betrayed. He's broken bread to share with us and washed our feet. We are told to do for others what he does for us. It's wonderful and inspiring on the one hand and it's unsettling on the other. There's an air of tension and excitement outside in the city. Behind closed doors, a sense of uncertainty. Supper is over. Judas has gone off on some kind of secret errand. It's time to take the air, 
Walk up the Mount of Olives to Gethsemane. Sit under the olive trees and relax after the Passover meal under the moon. But Jesus has something more to say tonight about leaving them. There are notes of sadness and apprehension in his voice. He's talking about hostility and rejection of the good news. Savage, pious condemnation, the worst kind, when God is absent from those who claim to act in God's name. He is warning us it's going to happen. He's talking again about leaving them, and he's serious about it. This is really worrying. What on earth can we do? What are we meant to do? How can it be to our advantage if he goes away now, after such an amazingly successful few days of teaching and welcome here in Jerusalem? He's saying that when he goes, we're not going to be alone. He's going to send one who will accompany us, defend us, speak on our behalf, the spirit of truth to lead us into all truth, to show and tell us the many things he didn't get round to saying. But what does he mean by this? How this spirit of truth can replace Jesus and lead us is just impossible to envisage right now, as we are, at this table full of good food, after a long and happy celebration. But the Spirit will tell us what's going to happen at the right time, will help us better understand Jesus and all that he shared with us these past three years about God and his kingdom. But right now, why he has to leave us is still a mystery. It still doesn't make sense. Can this really be his farewell speech? Forsake us not, O Lord, be not far from us, O Lord our God. Father, it is your will that we should see you in the face of your beloved Son. Hear us when we pray for your people. Lord, have mercy upon us. We praise you, Lord of heaven and earth, hope and joy in every day and age. Surround with the light of your love those overshadowed by shame and fear, guilt and despair. Lord, have mercy upon us. May your Spirit safely guide us and all in authority over us in these times of uncertainty and great concern. Lord, have mercy upon us. We pray for persecuted Christians and all people who suffer for their belief. Sustain them all in courage and in hope. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and hear us as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. God, the giver of life, whose Holy Spirit wells up within your church, by the Spirit's gifts equip us to live the gospel of Christ and make us eager to do your will, that we may share with the whole creation the joys of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And may the Lord bless us and keep us from all evil, and lead us to life everlasting. Amen.